What? It's actually fun to learn how to play the scale on the practice chanter? Yes, we can make it fun and I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. Hi, my name is Alec Chisholm and I'm creator of Get Bagpipe Ready. So traditionally, a scale is taught something like this. And then you just play together over and over again. The only problem with that is the toughest part with learning the pipes is getting your fingers to learn where the holes are. The second toughest part is then adding in grace notes onto that. So we start with the two hardest parts and in the nine, you know, I've been playing bagpipes since I was nine years old. Most people I talk to who want to learn how to play the pipes have a practice chanter at home tucked away somewhere in a closet or in a drawer and they gave it up because their fingers couldn't follow the holes and just learning the scale like that it's kind of boring and it's tough like this pinky for example has to find the hole again when you hit the C when you go up to D all of a sudden these three fingers need to find their hole as the pinky comes up on the bottom hand and the ring finger on the top hand needs to go here that's a really tough note not to get any crossing noises Now you can practice that all day long and still be getting some crossing noises. That's enough to make anybody want to quit this instrument. Does this resonate with you? Drop me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. So I propose let's come up with a fun way to help our fingers find the holes on the chanter. It may not be textbook, but not everybody learns the best by textbook. Sometimes we need something different. So I would say let's just ignore the bottom hand We'll get those fingers on the holes and then forget about it for a minute and we'll focus in on the top hand. So the bottom hand, you can actually look on your chanter. Find those holes, make sure they're there. And then lift the pinky. Alright? So all the, all the fingers are down on the holes for the bottom hand, except the pinky is up. And we're just going to worry about the top hand. So the top hand scale goes like this. So we start at E, we go to F, we go to G, and now this is the tricky one for the top hand. Thumb comes off, ring finger comes on its hole to high A. Now you can do that over and over again, but it's still not very exciting. In order to stick with this so that you can actually find those holes with your fingers and start uh, getting ready to play the bagpipes, we need that repetition. If it's not fun for our brains, we're not going to stick with it and get that repetition. So we're going to make it a bit fun by starting in on a tune. The tune we're going to look at is Cock of the North. And you don't need grace notes or fancy embellishments yet. And no, this isn't what's written in, in the music in the Scots Guard textbook, uh, or music book rather. But it's just a bit of fun. Make it interesting for your brain. So this is what we're going to work on next. That's the beginning of Cock of the North. So I'm going to slow that down for a little bit. Starts at high A. High A, the thumb is off, the top two fingers are off. For all the top hand notes we're playing, the bottom hand isn't changing. Those first three fingers on the bottom hand are down, pinky is up. 
high A to E, and then up to F, back to E, and then we just repeat that. I'll do a couple times slow. I'll do a couple times a little bit slower. Good. Once more, you're getting it. If your chanter is making funny sounds with that, we're not moving the bottom hand around. Probably you're not blowing hard enough. If it's sounding a bit like this, you got to keep blowing harder. That's why we're starting with the top hand. It needs a little bit more air. And if the chanter is new for you, you need to get used to blowing a little bit harder in it. So blow harder if your sound's starting to go. And remember, we are, we are doing a bit of a tricky thing at the top hand too. Not as tricky as the bottom hand to top hand motion that I mentioned earlier, but we are having to find those, those holes for the top hand. But at least we're just focusing on the top hand with finding the holes. In the next video, we'll get into more of the bottom hand to connect it and then make it actually feel like uh, you're, you're playing a whole tune. But in my mind, this is a little bit funner uh, to, to learn the scale doing it this way. So let me repeat slow what we're doing on the top hand again for you and then I'll play it quicker along with uh, the bottom hand that we'll look at in the next video. So here it is slow. Good and here it is at a little bit faster. Good. So keep practicing and we'll be looking at that bottom hand next week. See you in the next video. Thanks. Has this been helpful? Put a comment yes below. Let me know what was most helpful for you.